The Mahogany Project presents I Just Want to Tell Stories, hosted by Joe Anderson Jr., powered by the South Congress Podcast Network. Hey everyone, my name is Joe from the Mahogany Project. I'm super excited because this is episode two of I Just Want to Tell Stories, and I have an amazing guest today. Um, this person I met a couple years ago, yes. and we uh, work together with our organizations, I think. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> they have a podcast, and I have Alejandro in the, the house today. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for agreeing at the last minute. Girl. It was a... Uh, <laughs> we are here together. We are drinking. It was an IG message mm-hmm. without any detail. Can you just be here at 9, <laughs> yes. early 10? Man, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> so yesterday you moved. Yes, we moved from one side of town to the other. You went uh, south to north. South to north, yeah. And how was that process for you? I just pay people to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't handle it. It's so stressful. It is very stressful. Moving is a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a number one uh, stressor in people's life, if, if you look statistically, is moving. Yeah. Girl, I didn't know that, but mm-hmm. it makes sense yeah. in my life. Now I can blame that for all of this. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, I mean, I was, all week at work, I was like, I'm moving. It's I'm okay. Moving. And I think everyone gets it because no one likes to move, pack, mm-hmm. unpack, mm-hmm. all that whole process. Yeah. So sorry we went on a tangent. But uh, so let's talk. Let's tell the people how we origin- originally met. Yes. We met at a coffee shop. Halcyon. Yes. Halcyon. Yeah. I was late. I'm chronically late. It's, hey, I, I was I late I do not today. know why. I was late. <laughs> I do not know why I was late, but I definitely was late. And we were talking about... Because you're busy. you busy. I'm, that's why. I'm not that busy. It's, it's fraudulent. <laughs> uh, we were talking about Austin Pride mm-hmm. and the Mahogany Project doing some work right. together. Mm-hmm. Which happened. Yes. Yes. It did it happen. Good. And uh, we have a continued relationship. Oh, good. Yeah. It was, who, was that, who was at that meeting? Oh, me? P- people who were at that meeting are like, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be in the comments. <laughs> How did you forget me? Was Chelsea? Chelsea? Yes. Chelsea, Chelsea there? Yes. Okay. Hey, Chelsea. Hey. <laughs> and hey to everybody else that was at the meeting that we do not remember. Oh, my boyfriend was at a table. A different yes, 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 yes. Because we had a conversation work. afterwards. Correct, yeah. Okay. I told him I was coming here. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I remember Joe. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, cool. Um, so that has that was two years ago, right? Yeah, was it a year ago? A year ago? No. Was it two? It had to be two. Okay, it was two years ago. Okay, it could have been a year, actually. It could have been a year. It could have been a year. It could have been a year. <laughs> We're just so close. We're so that, close. You know, it feels like two years. <laughs> so, tell the folks how you are a creative. So, yeah. So, I, I have a podcast that is uh, out. Yo Soy is what, mm-hmm. we, is what I call it. I always say we, but there's no we. It's me. You know, like, <laughs> we have this podcast, and we're working really hard. And I'm like, girl, it's just me. Girl. Me, myself, and, <laughs> and I. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah. So, it tackles uh, stories of and just individuals who, are, who identify as Latinx and mm-hmm. also identify as LGBTQ. Um, and so, their stories and their... Um, their paths and you know just getting it out there so that's kind of how i am i guess you can say creative yeah mm-hmm. that's dope yeah these stories are important i don't want to go to tangent but they're no, really no, go go on the soapbox do you know <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll i'll bring my soapbox out later <laughs> but before we get into yeah. like talking more about your podcast i did want to get into where you're from yeah i so my family and everyone is from Mexico, right? Okay. And so, but I was born in California, so I grew what up part? Uh, San Francisco area. Oh, okay. I know. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a born gay. Right. <laughs> Guilty. Girl, rainbows coming uh-huh, out, bitch. Girl, That's everything. What's new? <laughs> and so the first 
so, but we moved from Florida, uh, from California to Florida when I was five. So then mm. I grew up in Orlando. Oh, okay. So Orlando, okay. Um, and then moved to Texas, Austin, four years ago, five years ago. So, so you were in Orlando the entire time. Yeah, I've, well, and I went to college at uh, Florida State in Texas. Oh, Austin. okay. Um, but yeah, Florida, essentially. Was, yeah, Florida, okay. the whole time. So I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. So were you, and a couple days ago was the three-year anniversary of mm-hmm. the shooting at Pulse. Yeah. Um, were you in Florida at the time? I wasn't. Or, okay. I had, when that, when that happened, I, uh, was in Houston, okay. um, coming back with a friend from the clubs, but the way I saw, heard about it was I was on Twitter and saw a lot of friends posting right away. Oh, wow. Um, and so then I had a lot of friends who lost either friends or family, um, through that. So it was, yeah, the 12th is always a really hard day. Yeah. yeah. So, you see all of this happening on Twitter. Right. Um, did you know anyone? Were you... I did was, not. Okay. Yes. To answer, I think, the question you're asking, I did, well, not, yeah, know, sorry. I did not know anyone any, that, unfortunately. one personally, yeah. but I, I think I have a friend who lost two cousins, oh, wow. uh, a friend who lost other friends, yeah. you know, three people or so, so yeah. So, what do you do around the, the 12th to self-care, That's to heal a little bit? Yeah. Because it's a lot. It's yeah, traumatic. it is. Um, I'd say that you just have to find that outlet for yourself, right? Um, one thing I do every 12th is I get a little ribbon, a mm-hmm. rainbow ribbon, and put it on. Um, I've done that every year. So And so every year people ask me about it, and I'm like, I have it with me. I'll make ribbons for people who oh, wow. are interested in also oh, doing it. Yeah. yeah, so we... So I do that, and sometimes, and I'm a lot more quiet that day, and people are like, why are you quiet? Because if you don't know, I'm, like, really loud. And I like, had you, no what? idea. What? You have a lot of energy. <laughs> and so on that day, I'm much more, and people are like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. You know, I'm like, well. Reserved yeah. and kind of, like, yeah. taking in. Yeah, taking in the day. Yeah. So, uh, but, I mean, I think self-care through that, that's, even if it's trauma, if you didn't witness it firsthand, it's secondary trauma, yeah. and all of that is plays a big role. Mm-hmm. And especially being mm-hmm. a support mm-hmm. to friends during this time as right. well, um, people may lean on you. Right. To, well, to and talk. I think the other piece too is all of my friends or people I know are in the Orlando community and so mm-hmm. I see state representatives, friends who mm-hmm. post all that day is big, yeah. you know, and so, yeah. Yes. So if you're a uh, parent, are you close to your parents? Yes. You have a, okay. mm-hmm. um, how often do you talk to your mom? All the almost every day, almost every almost day, almost every day. Really? Um, mm-hmm. Because and, and even on the day of polls, like she sent me this really nice text. Aww. I'll read it because oh, it's yay. so cute. And I was like, exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> Girl, I do more exclusive. Right? I like that word. Exclusive. exclusive. Yeah, I stole it from <laughs> Naomi, uh, my good friend Naomi mm-hmm. Smalls, and uh, my other good friend Valentina. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said they said Club ninety six. Okay. I'll just oh, yeah, say yeah. exclusive. I like yeah. that. Yes, that club was everything. <laughs> I've never been. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. my mom texted me this on the 12th. She said, started my day fighting back tears on my way to work as they read the 49 names and ages of the victims lost in the senseless act of hate that was followed by the song Till I See You Again. We will never forget, love will always win. So then I wrote, that's what she texted me, right? And so I said, thanks for those words, Mom. I appreciate it. Moi. And then she wrote more. She was, she was on her box. Oh, that come day. on, And she was like, Come on, mother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> more than words, mijo. Sharing my true feelings of the sadness and anger I felt that day and will never forget for the senseless hate that still exists in this world. But at the same time, feeling hope and love because love will always win. I know you understand that and what I mean and I feel. Love you. Right? Oh. My sweet. Girl, I would cry, but I don't have the water. Oh, girl. I'm dehydrated. You gotta, you gotta hydrate. Right. More. Girl, I have a bottle of water here. <laughs> I definitely would cry. I feel like I had like goosebumps reading or listening to that. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're very close. Very close. Uh-huh. And your dad? Very, we're close too. Okay, good. Very close. Um, I think he has gone through the journey since I've come out too, mm-hmm. you know, as like the older Mexican, you know, but. I mean, uh, whatchamacallit, there was a picture, we went to San Francisco two years ago as a whole family, and we yeah. all hung out at the Castro, and we took a picture, my dad and I took a picture in front of, like, this huge pride mural, then my mom and I took pic- like, we did a little photo shoot, yeah. you know, and it was okay. real cute, it was real cute. Come and, through top model. Yeah, and so the whole, 
Okay. Category <laughs> is pose. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, yeah, we're very close. Okay. Yeah. So I asked I asked that question because if your family, your mom and dad, were to describe you in three words, what were what would they choose? Mm. That's deep. <laughs> Is it? That, no, well, um, okay, well, we'll go deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that before. Um, no, I would say um, passionate. Mm. I think anything I've done in life has been very passionate, passionately done. Um, compassionate, so always working with, for people, with people. Um, and then I'd say loving. I think okay. the words they would choose. Why did you choose those three? I think when I, I think my parents know me very well, so I kind of like I'm saying those words as they describe me mm -hmm. a little bit, um, and so they know me very well. And I think that's how they would describe. Me. Okay. I think those words describe me in a, in a nutshell. Yeah. What type of kid do you think you were? <sighs> I was like I was the kid who like was fighting authority. Like I made this huge in high school a like huge protest against National Honor Society because I did not think something was just you know um, and so we yeah I was like fighting okay. things in high school come so, on that revolution mm -hmm, you know you gotta start somewhere bitch <laughs> I have a petition girl uh, <laughs> five names <laughs> yeah <laughs> And how old were you when that happened? High school? High school, yeah, yeah. High school okay. time. I think high school is when I started doing, like, uh, student government and all of that, so. Okay. Cool. And in high school, were you, like, was your high school very, like, cliquish at all, or? I went to an art school. Oh, bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how was that? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it was, well, and I wasn't. So I wasn't out, I didn't come out until college, right? Mm -hmm. But in high school, and it was a middle school slash high school, so okay. it was sixth grade through 12th grade, yeah. um, everyone was gay, yeah. right? It was very accepting. You were very, the anomaly I was, mm -hmm, at, the and, time. at the time. Yeah. And looking back, I'm like, damn, you know how much you I, uh -huh, well, I could have had a great time in high school. Yeah. But anyways, I loved, it was uh, art school, I did theater. There was still the, like, clickets. Clicks, but it was based yeah. on departments, so creative writers, uh, the, the, the drama people, okay. the theater, okay. you know, everything was clickish in that way. So at your high school, did you have to take classes in the other departments too? No, or you just you had took a major. It? So you were theater. You had, yeah, I had theater You were classes. on the stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Were you behind this, on the stage, behind the scenes? I did a, in four years in high school, I did both okay. a lot, but I think my passion was um, directing a lot, so mm. I did a lot of directing. Why work. do you think that was the passion? Because theater has a lot of roles and responsibilities. Uh, that's a great question, and I think i putting two and two together. I love developing people, like, professionally. I mm. love working with a team, getting them where they need to go, and just, I love that through my professional work. Um, and I think directing in that way can have that, you know, you're using different skill sets, getting actors to be in a certain place yeah. and, and putting together this vision. I, that's one of my passions professionally. And I think that bleeds into the theater world, too. So how do you think that's related to Yosoi? Yes, I think for me, for Yosoi, my, my big thing is getting people's stories out there, yeah. right? Like when I think to myself, why didn't I come out a lot younger is because I think I didn't know that people could be successful who look like me or have those stories like me, right? I was very much into politics at the time, I still am. But for me, it was like, I'd never seen a gay rep, you know, state rep or a gay, you know, so I'm not gonna come out, you know? Like, mm. And then that was part of it. And so I think for me, the joy of Yo Soy is getting these, you know, different diverse people to share their stories for a younger self that I wish I had heard, Okay, you know? So if there was a story or a person's story that you would want to hear on your podcast, who would it be? Your dream get. Oh, my God. Three people. Ugh. I know. I made it so hard. <laughs> wow. I'm like the teacher. We're going to have a test. <laughs> and the test will be no book, no open book. And it's going to be over everything in this semester. <laughs> <laughs> and everything last semester. Good luck. <laughs> and don't fuck I, it up. <laughs> Shantae, you stay. Um, <laughs> Shantae, have y'all fail. 
<laughs> Do you ever have those tests? Sorry, tangent, but like you had, you can have one postcard and whatever you <laughs> have, and then write all your notes. Miss, I learned how to write real slow, small. Look, I wrote real small and couldn't even read my own writing. I was like, <laughs> I failed. So I just started trading with people. <laughs> I got chapter one, uh-huh. and we're good. Uh-huh. Who got chapter two? See, that, um, and you built a good community that no, way. That's, mm-hmm. that's what I'm, I'm a prophet, I guess. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I would say one of the people I would love to interview, I would love to interview Valentina one day. Would be, Ooh. yeah, it would be fun. Uh, I just, there's a lot of advice. Just being in that light, right? And how do people just end up hating someone or a villain or, you know? And that, I think, plays a big role into it. Okay, Valentina is one. And then I would say a number two. You know what? It's for me, what I find, not even just individuals, but for me, what I'm really interested in is particular stories. So one of the things I want to take the podcast in the direction is going to different places mm. and traveling, right? That would be my dream with the podcast is going to a Latin American country and then hearing what does it mean to be gay in Cuba, for example, and gathering those things. That, for me, is yeah. my dream. Your dream. Mm-hmm. So how did this project come about? Like, what What was the thought process behind it? What made you want to say... And one, one is getting the stories out there. Right. But what made... You know, it's one thing to... And we talked about this a little bit. Mm-hmm. You have all these ideas as a mm-hmm. creative. And you're like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And then you, you actually start doing it. So what was the one thing that made you actually go with it? So I'm in a Latina fraternity, right? Oh, which one? Uh, Phi Iota Alpha. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so I'm in that. And so I had a fraternity brother once... I have, like, brothers who haven't come out yet or are mm-hmm. coming out. And one of them called me once. This was a few years before I started doing all of this stuff. And said, oh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being out and um, doing your stuff. Because I'm seeing a, a Latino male who's gay being out there. And I can be a professional. And it reminded me of kind of how I... Um, why I wanted to do this, right? And yeah. so that comment, that conversation really was like, well, there's a lot of people who I know who are inspiring. And so let's get them out there. Let's get their stories out yeah. there. Let's find these things. And so that was the moment where I kind of was like, we need to get people's stories out there that way. Dope. Yeah. So what was the process? What is the process like? So I think that for me, it's finding getting individuals who are very who i'm interested in right yeah. like you're, you you do the same thing too like you want to find people who are like oh i'm interested i want to pick their brains yeah. a little bit you know and yeah. so you have to find that genuine interest um and then just sitting down getting a microphone and just chatting and really uh, and then editing and yeah. doing all that stuff so. so you do all of that mm-hmm. so you know one of the things that i think as a creative people don't see is the process it, process it takes to create yeah yeah <laughs> So, from start to finish, how long does it take for you to do an episode? And I'm talking about start, when you start thinking about the idea behind it, when you start thinking about the questions you want to ask, coming up with everything from start to finish. Finding the person, whatever. Yeah, I think at least hours, hours, like hours per episode. And that's, and I've, and I think through that process, you're figuring out what works best for you, because at the same time, too... Being creative, you also have a full time job, <laughs> and you still have, and so it's. I think the hardest Hallelujah. part, you right? <laughs> the hardest part is balancing those things yeah. and trying to make it work for you to go still make money to do this and then to do that passion yeah. and creative outlet. So for me, I've tried different things. I've been like, oh, let me record all the episodes and then do the editing in pieces, you know, or, or I don't know, it's just very different. Um, but yeah, I'm still figuring that out. Yeah. So you're on season three, right? Yeah, in the middle of season three. Middle of season three. Who, well, maybe I shouldn't ask this question, but I'm going to ask anyway. Who has been your favorite interview? And I know um, uh, a guest on your podcast is in the building, but feel free not to even worry about him. Oh, he was a fantastic interview. You can catch that guest on episode three next time. <laughs> oh, I love it. No, I think one of my favorite people was um, Cynthia Lee Fontaine's episode. I listened to the episode. Yeah. 
And I'll tell you why. One of the okay. things was... Tell me why. I'll tell you why, <laughs> child. Um, there, she was very genuine, right? Mm-hmm. And it was putting, pulling the, down that mask of, this is a, pers- a, a public persona, this is who I am, mm-hmm. and then pulling that mask down and really going into in depth of, well, this is your story, this is your background, this is, you know, mm-hmm. and that um, was fascinating for me and really kind of pulling those layers back that most people don't hear or most people don't know about, um, which was something that was I liked about that interview in particular. Oh, nice. Yeah. So are you technically trained on any of the equipment that you use or doing a podcast? No, ma'am. How do you... <laughs> <laughs> so what do you, you just look at YouTube or yeah I've been YouTubing self you know yeah. self figuring it out yeah. I think I think that's the piece too in the creatives is like when you want to do something you just have to figure it out and do it yeah or, um, and figure out you ain't got no budget there ain't no budget you, there ain't gotta, no, you know um, you hustle yeah. you figure it out ask friends for favors mm-hmm, yes. you know um, and so I think that's kind of the piece yeah I had to teach I didn't know how to use half of the things I'm all of the things I'm using <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sugarcoat this yeah. yeah it was hard. It, yeah but you know as it grows you just build it you know and, and go from there okay so Issa Rae um, said this quote one day um, well I'm not gonna quote her because I don't know the exact verb she <laughs> is but essentially is what she was saying is people have this idea that you have to build up when you're trying to be a creative and when you're trying to like do amazing things and she said you should build uh, around you um, so that way, everyone is kind of equally going up and moving, and, right. and you bring people up with you yeah. as you go up, and they bring you up as well. Yeah. So my question to you is, who are the people that are that you are building up with you? Yeah. As you're doing this journey through your soy. Yeah, I think when I first did the first season, two seasons of the uh, se- uh, of your soy. I really had to just ask friends, yeah. right? It was at that point, I'm like, no one's getting, this is the first episode of the right. podcast, and I'm like, no who one's going to go, yeah, I'm like, who I? like, hey, I was like, Marcus, <laughs> <laughs> you know, would you like to do, and just talking to people yeah. and saying, hey, you know, this is, would you like to help me out here? I can promote your stuff and, and do that as well. Um, and those are the people who took a chance, right? It wasn't until like the third season, now the interviews that are coming, that for the first time I'm like, oh, hi, my name's Alejandro. Oh, I'm meeting them when I sit down. That's a different experience for me um, because most of the people I've interviewed, I've known. And they were willing to say, yeah, let me sit down, let me talk. And and those are the people in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, thank you so much for doing, you know, Mm -hmm. and building up those brands and those people, what they're doing, um, because they took a chance, right? right? And I think that's the piece, too, who's taking chances on um, people of color, creatives who are, um, in the minority in doing this. And yes, I would completely agree with Issa yeah. that you have to raise everyone up. Yeah. Who do you look up to? That can be like podcasts, that can be like yeah, yeah. personal, professional. Who do you look up to? Uh, I don't I, I'm going to say this and it may give, it'll be a Cornell, but this is genuine. Uh, I read you what I said to my mom about yeah. my mom. And I would say one of the people who I look up to a lot is my mother, mm. right? Um, just having that grace and she has four kids and all four of us are you know very different diverse but um i think love is at the core of it all Mm. right and um so i would say that is someone who i always look up to you know my professionalism is from my mother you know Mm. like all of that she taught me how to do that and so yeah that would be my answer so you have Three siblings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you? Where are you in terms of? I'm the ham away? and cheese. You know, me and my sister. We're in the middle. Uh, mm-hmm. So I have an okay. older brother, older sister, okay. me, and then my younger. And younger sister. how was it growing up with three other people in the household that are like siblings and uh, yeah, everyone's I mean, crazy? Uh huh. And... Well, it was the the good thing was my two older siblings are much older, oh, so okay, they're okay. like uh, in their thirties or so, late thirties, and so then so my parents had them too took a break, and then me and my little sister. Oh. So my little sister and I are very close. Gotcha. Where, you know, you have that little partner yeah. and friends. So. Oh, that's dope. It's mm-hmm. like two and two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gotcha. so we got, yeah, we got, me and my little sister are very close. And is, is your little sister in Austin as well? She or? is in New York City, and then she is flying and moving to L.A. 
coast to coast. Uh, oh, wow. Uh-huh. And so is there anyone in your family that's a creative as well? Yeah, my uh, so everyone in their respect. So yeah. my older brother does a lot of writing. He's mm. a writer. You could say he writes poetry and all of this stuff. It's oh, great. I love your older brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> beautiful writing. He's great, already. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My older sister does a lot of music. So mm. she plays guitar, they play piano. You go to her house, there's music playing everywhere. And then my younger sister is a comedian, so she does oh. sketch writing and things like that as well. So so how did all of these creative spirits come from one household? That's why I say my mother, I think, oh, is yeah? that role model. Like, really pulled it out of pulled it. Yeah, I mean, me and my little sister went to that art school. My mm. older brother was in theater. My younger older sister was in sports, but she also did, you know, I have no idea what the secret was to... Are your parents creatives in the ways? My dad is, I think. Okay. I think both of them. My mom loves the arts and, yeah. and was a supporter of, of everything. And then my dad was, you know, he's been doing recently, like, art pieces, art installation, oh. like, with, like, computer parts. And fascinating. And so he puts this up. And so I'm like, oh, you're very creative, too, Dad. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> we never knew, you know? And so one of those things, I think, yeah, I don't know how they got it out of all of us, but we were all very creative household, yeah. So where do you want to take your soy next? My dream with it yeah. is to continue growing it, but then, you know, traveling, I think, across the country, traveling across uh, Latin America, mm-hmm. and capturing these stories, like every season being either a topic or a country or a location, and capturing these stories of what does it mean to be LGBT and Latinx in a X place or in this mm. location. Um, so really, my dream is to be able to leave my job and then do that. And have yeah. somebody pay you to do mm-hmm. this. Travel Channel, Netflix, you know, y'all. Come on, Natural you, Geographic, come on, Discovery, Oprah. Uh huh. Let's get, get on, on the girl. Uh huh. So. Come on, own network. <laughs> but that's the dream. That's the that's goal. The dream. Is, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the dream. So what's next for you? Um, season three. Season three, and uh, still putting that together. But then I think season four. I think we're gonna try to branch out, build yeah. the website out. Uh, we updated the logo for season three. Um, Beautiful logo. Oh, I love I that. I saw it and I was like, "That's bomb pussy." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you try, I try, I try. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, kiddos. <laughs> but and then season four will be, you know, something. I think going in that direction. I think I want to go down to the border um, mm. and capture stories there. Um, and try to start building that um, that vision, right? And and do that. So, yeah. So, where can people find you? Yeah, you can go. You can find me. My personal uh, Instagram and handle is at real Alejandro Victor, uh, at real Alejandro V. There you okay. go. And then, say it one more time for the people. At real Alejandro V. Okay. And then uh, Yo Soy Podcast. You can go at Yo Soy Podcast. That's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can see that anywhere. And we'll also post it on our social media channel yes. so people can find you. Fantastic. Before we wrap this, mm-hmm. I do have a very important question. No, ask away. This is something we ask and it's really random. <laughs> so, top five. Mm. And the category is mm. pizza toppings. Oh, yes. Top five. In top. any order. Okay. <sighs> Olives. Okay. Okay. I won't judge you. I know, it's okay. We're about to get into the judgment. Okay. <laughs> Um, pepperoni. I think pepperoni. Okay. For classic. Sure. Classic. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, sausage. Okay. Well, who Gotta doesn't love it. sausage? Ooh, little meat. Uh-huh. Right. Um, <laughs> um, I want to go there. Okay. And I'm going to say pineapple. You are one of those people. And, and I knew you were coming. Okay. Uh-huh. So Hawaiian. it's Hawaiian pizza. Olives, I'm sorry. Yeah. Pepperoni, sausage, pineapples and, and ham, ham. Mm-hmm. a hawaiian okay you can't go wrong we'll know <laughs> not to let you order these. <laughs> don't put me in charge of that one right? <laughs> uh thank you so much for coming thank it's you, been girl. a lovely chat thank Agreed. you so much um i want to thank y'all so much for listening and we will uh be back next week have a great one love and light thank you so much that's a wrap up episode two.
I Just Want to Tell Stories is hosted by Joe Anderson Jr. for The Mahogany Project and produced by Cameron Hawkins for the South Congress Podcast Network.